I've showed you the Custom Supports plugin for Cure in a previous video. Well, they've come out with an update which has some really interesting shapes which can be handy for certain 3D prints. So let me show you what they are on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. I'm going to use Cura version 4.12, but you can actually do this in previous versions as well. Go up to the marketplace and there's two plugins that I want you to install. One is the calibration shapes. This is very handy, so install that one. And then we're not going to reset Cura yet. We're going to scroll down further and get the cylindric custom support. Install this plugin. This one has been updated and this is where the new features are. Click on the quit button, it'll restart Cura and install the plugins. Now that we've installed the plugins, let's download the bridge test and then we'll try three different supports, standard supports, tree supports, and then custom supports. The first plugin we're gonna use is the extensions part for calibration. Scroll down to the support test, click on that and it'll drop onto our bed. So this is actually a support test print that comes with that plugin. Not the custom supports, the other one. So now let's just use normal supports. I'll click on generate support, slice this guy, and let's see what it looks like. It says 56 minutes and there's supports everywhere. And you can see there's supports on top of the existing print. I don't want that. So this is the area I want to keep supports from. So let's try tree supports to see if it'll go around it. So I slice that, it takes less time. You can see it grows around it. But when I go deeper, you can see it actually is leaving supports in the middle here. I want to try and support it without any supports on top of the print. So now let's use custom supports. I select the part and then go down to the bottom. Here's the custom support cylinder plugin that we installed. And it's got a lot of standard shapes that I showed before. But there's this new one right here called the Freeform. That's the one I want to play with. But to start, let's just use some standard custom support. I'll use a cylinder and you just click on it, place it. And now you can reposition any of these guys like a normal STL file. Just grab it, move it with the arrows so it's centered to where you want it, and then you're ready to go. And don't check the support box. It'll use your settings, but don't check that box. And then slice it, and here's how it looks. It'll support that point. So that's easy. And for this other point, I could just use the square. I'll click on it, put the square support in place, and again, don't check the box, we'll just slice it. And this is what this one looks like. It's using my settings that are already in the profile. Now for these areas that I don't wanna to touch the bottom of the print, this is where I'm gonna use the freeform. I'll set this to 20 millimeters. I'm using the arch buttress. You just click on it and look at it. It's this arm that comes out away from the print. And you can move this, like I said, just like any STL file, just click on it, move it with the arrows so I can center it to the ball here in both directions and now it's going to support that center and then build from there but yet never touch the bottom of the print. Here it is sliced and in preview mode so you get to see how this thing will look. It should support this quite well. For this last one I'm going to use another free form only this time it's going to be the bridge. I really like this one. You just click where you want it. I'm going to put two of them here. So they bridge right over the existing print, the bottom of the print, and still support the top of it. These are really handy in my mind for a lot of different prints. So let's look at this sliced and in preview mode. You can see now I'm supporting all the top of this print, but I'm not touching any of the bottom. So that should stay completely clean. These are the advantages to these custom supports. Like I said, you're not going to use them all the time, but when you need a custom support or a custom shape, they're really handy. I printed this on my Ender 3 V2 and they came out perfect. Some of these supports broke off and I removed them from the bed. Now you can see the bottom here is untouched, so it didn't get touched by supports. The top here probably could have been a little bit better. The cylinder did a decent job, but this is probably because I printed out a 0.28 layer height instead of say a 0.2 or 0.12. Now these other ones, the double bridge here, those broke off with just a little bit of flex. Just popped right out. And not too bad. Bottom surface untouched, which is what I wanted. The top surface just a little bit saggy, but not too bad. Now I used a cross here instead of the block that I showed, and I'll tell you what, the cross didn't work. This is horrible. So that's no good. But for a simple test like this, 
Not too bad. Let me show you another one. Here's a large bridge. I'm going to use the T support. So I'm just going to put it in the center and I just actually I can click right on the top and it puts it where I want it. I try to get center. It's not exact, but it's just going to build up and it knows don't cover the existing print, even though I clicked on top. So this is going to help the bridging. So it's going to go across. We should get better bridging with this and then this will break away. And here's the finished print came out just fine. The support broke away pretty easy and left a pretty smooth bottom of this bridge. Here's another shape that you can use on a cross. It's called the cross. So it'll support in both directions. And then you can center this or move it just like you would any other print. I've also got these sections that you can put in place if you want to support this all the way across. And then if you uncheck the set on Y direction, it'll turn it 90 degrees and you can click it on the other ones. Just click on top. And now you got two more section supports. To get rid of a support, just click on it and then click on it again and they'll disappear. So I got rid of these two and now I'm going to bring in the pillar. This is one that's a little more of a thicker top and a wider base. So if you have a support where you need support on the bed, this is another option. When you slice it, this is what they'll look like. Now a lot of times this will not save you time. They will take longer to print than tree supports. But therefore when you need that special support, you now have some great shapes to choose from. If you use my Cure Profiles, the supports break away pretty easy, just like this one did. Now, in most cases, it's better to use tree supports. In fact, I recommend use tree supports wherever you can. You'll save plastic, you'll save time, and you'll get great results. But in some cases where standard supports won't work, tree supports won't work, you just need an occasional custom support in a certain location, you now have a lot more choices in Cura. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.